What's up team? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this awesome layer style so you guys can implement it within your graphics, whether it's a t-shirt or a hoodie. I think this layer style is very versatile and it's amazing for almost any sort of brand identity. So let's go ahead and get locked in. And now you're here. So we went from this to this. So let's go ahead and start by creating our artboard. For this one, it's gonna be 3,500 width by 2,900 height at a resolution of no less than 350 DPI. Now this artboard is a bit too big for me, so I might resize it a bit, make the height 2,000 even, because this is gonna be mainly a type graphic. Next, let's go ahead and add our text. So right here, brand name, Supreme. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some by text. Uh, Oh, gunmetal, supreme gunmetal. Make this a bit bigger. Just press Command T on your keyboard and it'll make it larger. Now this is gonna sound crazy, but I want you to go ahead and add in a new artboard. Like I, I recommend you make it the exact same as your other artboard. Press create. We're gonna go ahead and drag in a texture. Now this texture is from Unsplash, will be linked in the description below. So right click, rasterize layer. Make sure it's sized up completely so there's no borders. Edit. Define pattern, name your pattern, press OK. Now from here, we're gonna go back into our original file and then we're gonna start by right clicking our Supreme text and then heading over into our blending options. And then we're gonna start with our reset to the default list so you can see everything and head over to pattern overlay and you can see the pattern's already adjusted. I'll put it on this one because this is the one we just made and you can size it to fit however you want. I think around here is perfect. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in an inner glow, and then we're gonna set this to a gray. We're gonna set this to normal. We're gonna set the noise to eight. We're gonna set the opacity to around 33. Make sure this is on edge. We're gonna set this choke to 11, size to 40. Lovely. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go into stroke, and this stroke, we're gonna go ahead and set this one to the center. We're gonna set the size to three. And now instead of color, we're gonna go ahead and change this to gradient. And now we're gonna try to make a metal sort of gradient. So start with a white on this side, add a point here, set it to like a gray of some sort. You wanna keep this black point, so you can add a point to add black and then add another point right here. Set this to a white. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add another point right here, set this to a gray, and then grab a point here too. Set this one to a gray also, add another point around here set this to a white. So white, gray, white, black, white, gray, white, gray. That's the pattern you wanna follow. Press okay. Opacity, we'll just set this to around 75%. Oh, actually keep it at 100. Everything else stays the same. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add another stroke. This time we're gonna set it to the outside. Almost the exact same settings, but remove this gray or this black one. And then for the center one, I want you to set it to like a gray. Perfect. We're gonna add another stroke. Make sure this one is also set to the outside. We're gonna change this one to a color. Select whatever color you want. I really like this orangey look. Make it a bit larger. Then we're gonna head over to our bevel and emboss. And right away, we're gonna head over into texture. And now for the texture, I want you to set the same exact texture that you have for your actual pattern. I'm gonna set this for 41, and I'm gonna set this to negative 10. Just adding, in, uh, just adding in a subtle texture so it looks a bit more seamless. Now for this contour, we're gonna set it to this one right here. And then for the actual bevel and emboss part of this, we're gonna set the depth to 365. Keep this the same, in a bevel, smooth. Set this to 13, keep this at zero. For the highlight mode, we're gonna put this on normal. We're gonna set it to like a um, almost like a dark gray slash blue color around here. This one will keep it black. Set these both to 100. And now you're here. So we went from this to this. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a texture. This one was downloaded from Texture Labs. And mainly I want this part of the texture, the top part. So I'm gonna scale it so it's over our text. Turn off this gunmetal. Add a mask to our Supreme font. Go ahead and add in a threshold around here. Next, I'm gonna go select color range and adjust this until we have all our lines in there. Make sure it's on shadows, press okay. 
we're going to turn off the layer with our texture and also we're going to turn off the threshold and then we're going to go to our text with the mask on it go in with a black paint bucket and then fill that layer in or the mask in and that's going to cut it out of our text giving it this little cool effect now if it's too much for you Go into the blending options and adjust your stroke because that will be a majority of how the font looks. Another cool thing you could do is you could add an outer glow, set it to normal and follow the same color you just did. Add a bit of noise, fire. Let's go ahead and turn on the gun metal. For this one, we're just gonna go into the blending options again, but all we're gonna do this time is just change the color and set it to the color of the stroke. We can go ahead and get rid of the texture and the threshold and let's go ahead and group these two together, convert them into a smart object. Now, if you really wanted to, you can go ahead and add in the hue slash saturation, drop down some of the hue on the colors, create a clipping mask. I'm going to go ahead and add in this texture by Texture Labs. It's Texture Labs Paper 233. Once it's sized to the R board, I'm going to go ahead and right click, create clipping mask. And I'm gonna set the color to soft light. Just makes it look a bit more dramatic. Let's go ahead and change the artboard color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the move tool, select my artboard, set it to black, and remove this layer that was created. And we see what the design is looking like. From here, if we want it to be a bit more brighter, we can go ahead and remove this texture. Perfect. Now that turned out fire. All you have to do now is group this all again. So select it all, press Command G to group. Convert this into a smart object. Go ahead and add in a new artboard. Set this to 2000 by 2000 pixels. And now if you wanna learn how to make a real life mock-up, I have a whole video on this, but I'm just gonna drag in this t-shirt right here and copy this design, paste it on this artboard and size it for this t-shirt. I'm gonna set the color to white and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of this mock-up. Wonderful. And now we have a simple t-shirt design with a Supreme. It's unique, it has unique textures to it. You don't see this. Now the cool thing with having layer style, so if we go to this original design that we made, we can go ahead and go into the blending options and save this layer style as gun metal. And now if we add in a new artboard, size it down a bit, add in our graphic, maybe it's a big S, we can go ahead and go into the blending options, styles, and our style will be saved down here. And now we have a design complete in about two seconds. All we have to do is just copy over everything else that we added, like textures and stuff of that nature. And this also works for things like your logos. But I really like using layer styles for graphics because it allows you to be very versatile and also have a sort of thing to lean on. If you're running out of ideas for pieces, having a quick layer style like this is extremely cool. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.